What's going on everybody? Welcome to another awesome video on the normal distribution. In this video we're talking about problems involving finding the mean and standard deviation. If you haven't already watched my first two videos in this series on the normal distribution, one over the normal function and one over the inverse normal function, highly recognize or highly recognize, highly recommend that you do that. So I'm going to be using both of those ideas in this video. All right, so first, when data is normally distributed, rem reminder that the mean and standard deviation run the show. They together dictate the center of the distribution and how spread out it is. And with the mean and standard deviation, a z-score can be calculated for every single value in the data. But since it's normally distributed, every z-score has a proportion of data below it and above it. And we can find that with the normal function. So that's why everything is truly linked here, right? So if we have the mean and the standard deviation that run the normal model, then we could use those two things to find a z-score for any particular value. Pretty easy formula here for z-score. But with a z-score, we could use the normal function to find a proportion above it and a proportion below it. So we have so many values all intertwined here. We have the mean, we have the standard deviation, we have an actual value, an, an actual individual value in the data. We have that corresponding value's z-score. Then we got a proportion above that z-score and a proportion below that z-score. So once again, just to make a quick picture of that normal model, right smack dab in the middle is the mean. We go up one, two, three standard deviations, down one, two, three standard deviations. Remember that mean has a z-score of zero. And then again, let's just say we find an actual value. So if I say, okay, here's an actual value right here. Its z-score is about positive 0.5. Um, it has an actual value X that I could also find. But then again, look at the graph. There is a percentage of data below it and there's a percentage of data above it. So all these things are intertwined. And if you understand how they're all intertwined, everything I do in this video is going to make a lot more sense. All right, so let's look at a generic example where we're asked to find the standard deviation. So a random variable X has a standard deviation that follows a normal model. Okay, awesome. If it wasn't for that, we couldn't even do the problem. The mean of X is 22.5, so I'm gonna write that down. The mean is 22.5. And we know that a value of 16 is at the 20th percentile. So an actual value of 16 is at the 20th percentile. That means that there's 20% of data below it, which we could also in turn means there's 80% of data above it. And the question wants us to find the standard deviation. All right, so everything is connected through that z-score formula. And I truly mean that. Everything is connected through this z-score format. All right, so let's first fill in everything that I know. Well, the individual x that I was given is 16 minus the mean is 22.5. So heck, the numerator is already good to go. The standard deviation is what they asked me to find, but here's the most important part. I could actually find the z-score. Even though I don't know the standard deviation to literally calculate the z-score with the information I have, because I was given this information, I can find the z-score using that inverse function on my calculator. So I know there's 20% below 16. So this is exactly what an invert norm is going to be very helpful for me right now because the invert norm on my TI-84 calculator, once again, second VARS gets me to that distribution command. I'm going to go to inverse norm and I'm going to type in 20% here and I'm also going to make sure that it says left. That's because we know 20% is to the left or below. Now I could select right if I wanted to and then I'd have to type in 0.8 because 20% to the left means 80% to the right. So I'm just going to stick with the left because that's what was given. And this is that z-score. So a z-score of negative 0.842 is a z-score that has that 20% below it. And what is the it? That's the 16 because I know there's 20% 20 20 below 16. And that would be 20% a below a z-score of negative 0.842. So I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to fill in that z-score with negative 0.842. It's all connected, right? This is the z-score for 16, and I knew that because it's got 20% below it. We already knew the mean, and now we're asked to find the standard deviation. Now it becomes a pretty simple math, a math problem. So 16 minus 22.5 in that numerator is negative 6.5. Uh, I messed up, though. It's, it's um, yeah. The... Z-score is negative 0.842. I wrote 0.22, so negative 0.842. Sorry about that. 
So negative 0.842 equals, again, that numerator was negative 6.5 divided by sigma. All right, how do I solve for sigma? Well, the first thing I do is multiply it over to the other side. So multiply the sigma over. So I get negative 0.842 sigma equals negative 6.5. And then we're going to divide by the negative 0.842 divide by the negative 0.842, and I will have sigma. Two negatives make a positive, and standard deviation is always positive, so if you ever get a negative standard deviation, you did something wrong. And I get a standard deviation of 7.7197, so 7.720, 7.720. That's it, pretty easy, but again, everything is connected through, know, through knowing the z-score formula. The z-score formula is what's gonna connect everything together. All right, let's do another example. This one's going to be in context. So the weights of bullfrogs are normally distributed with a mean of 950 grams. Okay, there's my mean. The top 10% of weights is marked by a weight of 1,600. So an actual bullfrog weight of 1,600 grams has 10% tops. So that's 10% above which simultaneously means 90% below or to the left. All right, so now they want to find the standard deviation once again. So I'm just going to go ahead and use that uh, z-score formula, and I'm going to fill in everything I know. All right, I know the individual x that I was given was 1,600. I know the mean is 950. I don't know sigma. That's exactly what we're solving for. But wait a minute, I can't, you know, some kids say, well, I can't find the z-score. I don't know the standard deviation. I, I agree but you were given this amazing information. There's 10% below the 1600. So that's where I could grab invert norm on my calculator. Excuse me, 10% above. Now be careful, right? You could use this calculator. You got left, you got right. So if I want to go left, I'm going to put 0.9 because 10% at the top is 90% to the left. I could also change that to right and put 0 0.10 there and I would get the same z-score. Now, if you have an older calculator that does not have this row that says tail here, your calculator only accepts the area below. So you would have had to understand that 10% above means 90% below. So keep something to keep in mind. Again, I went over all that in the video for the inverse normal distribution. So 1.282 is my z-score. And again, just like last problem, all I got to do is solve. 1.282 on top 1600 minus 950 is 650. Multiply sigma to get it over to the other side. 1.282 sigma equals the 650. Last step is to divide by the 1.282. And go to your calculator. 650 divided by the 1.282 is a standard deviation of 507.020. In this case, that would be grams. Got to actually put a G on there for grams. All right, pretty cool, pretty easy, not too bad. All right, let's do another set of problems here. This time we're looking for the mean, but it's a very similar idea. The random variable X is a standard deviation of 6.5 and it follows a normal distribution. That is awesome. Okay, so this time I was given that the standard deviation is 6.5. The probability that X is less than 35 is 0.085. Okay, so the actual value I was given, the probability that X is less than 35 is 0.084. So I was told that the standard deviation, once again, is 6.5. The actual value, like an, an actual data value they gave me was 35. And, they, and I was told that um, the probability that I'm less than that, so that's less to the left, is 0.084. Now that simultaneously means, if you care to, to know, that 0.916 is above it. Remember, there's always two sides to a probability, above and below. All right, so once again, I'm going to jump right into that z-score formula. And I'm just going to start substituting in everything I know. All right, I know that the actual x that the question gave me was 35. I do not know the mean. I'm going to leave that as a mu. But I do know the standard deviation is 6.5. And once again, I do know the z-score. Even though I can't calculate the z-score with the z-score formula, because I was told that there's 8.4% below 35, or the probability that I'm below 35 is 0.084, I can go to my calculator. I'm going to grab that invert norm command, and I could actually get the z-score. 
So I'm going to leave it on left because we're looking below 0.084. You are more than welcome to switch that to right and put 0.916. You're going to get the same z-score whether it has 0.084 below it, 0.916 above it, left, right, same thing. And I get a, let me go down here to paste, get a z-score of negative 1.379. Z score of negative 1.379. All right, now I just got to solve. All right, a little bit different solving technique here, but still not too bad. First thing I'm going to do is multiply by the 6.5. That's going to cancel it out on the right. So, and you actually, I actually not going to go to a calculator yet, but again, you could just write 6.5 times negative 1.379. The reason why I don't want to go to a calculator right now is because I'm going to get some decimal that I don't want to round the middle of a problem. Then I'm going to have to subtract the 35 over. Okay, and now I could go to my calculator. Actually, let me pull it up real quick here. So I'm going to do um, the 6.5 times the negative 1.379. I could use all the decimals as well if I wanted to, at least, at least keep three. Then I'm going to add that 35 over, or not add, what was it? I needed to subtract the 35. I apologize. I apologize. Well, I don't have it in front of me. I don't always say it right. Minus the 35. Now, notice I do get a negative here, and that's okay, but let me write that down first. Negative 43.964. Negative 43.964. I'm going to tell you why it's okay there's a negative there. Because I still have not gotten rid of this negative that's on the mu. Right? I subtracted the 35. That negative is still on the mu. So I'm going to divide by negative 1. Or you can multiply by negative 1. You don't even need to calculate for that. That's going to produce a positive 43.964. So there is my mean. Nice and simple. Not too bad. Right, let's do one more example finding a mean. So the time it takes for Dave to brush his teeth follows a normal model with a standard deviation of 10.6 seconds. The probability it takes him over 135 seconds to brush his teeth is 0.102 or 10.2%. What is the mean? So once again, I start writing down what I was given. I was given the standard deviation, 10.6 seconds. I was given that an actual value of 135 seconds has 0.102 or 10.2% over, so that's going to be to the right, and again, 1 minus the 0 0.102, that would be the below, and if you care to know that, be 0.898 is the above, so 89.8% would be to the left. Remember, all probabilities, all proportions have a side below and a side above. All right, so I'm just going to fill everything in on that z-score formula here. This z-score formula, a lot of kids say, I don't know where to start. Start with the z-score formula. All right, so let's see here. The actual value in the problem is 135. I don't know the mean. That's what they asked me to find. I do know the standard deviation is 10.6. And now this is where I'm going to find my z-score because I know there's 10.2% above, 89.8% below. So if you have an older calculator that doesn't have this option to go right, you're going to always be stuck going left. I personally always use left. So I know the problem said 10.2% is over, but I'm actually going to put the 0.898. That's the left. That's below. It's Again, if you want to put the 0.102, you can. You just got to select right. If you don't even have that tail option, you got to put the below no matter what. And this is going to give me the z-score, 1.270. So this is the z-score that has... That's a bad looking two. 1.270. This is the z-score that has 10.2% above it or 89.8% below it. And now I'm just going to solve. Start by multiplying by the 10.6. So I have 10.6 times the 1.270 equals the 135 minus mu. Now I'm going to subtract the 135 over. And at this point, I'll go and grab my calculator. 10.6 times 1.270 minus the 135 is negative 121.538. Be okay with that negative because it's about to go away because don't forget that negative is still on the mu. So I'm going to divide or multiply both sides by negative 1. So I get a mean of 121.538 seconds. All right. So again, Hopefully, uh, this is pretty cool, right? It's all powered by that z-score formula and knowing how to use those functions on your calculator. 
All right, I want to do one more problem here with you. This is a pretty cool AP type problem because we have to find something to find something else. This is a pretty good multi-level problem. All right, so scientists are working for a water district measures. Scientists working for a water district measure the water levels in a lake each day. The daily water level in the lake varies due to weather conditions and other factors. Duh, sometimes it's higher, sometimes it's lower. Now, the water level does follow a approximately normal distribution, which is awesome, and it does have a mean of 85.2. Okay, that is awesome. So we know the mean, 85.2 feet. Now, they tell us that the probability that the daily water level in the lake is at least 100 feet is 0.074. So we're given an actual amount of water in the lake, that's 100 feet, and we are told that at least 100, now be careful, at least is over, at least is more than, so that's the 0.074 that is to the right, more than 100. Now once again, if I do 1 minus 0.074, that would get me the below, that's 0.926, that's below. Okay. Now, the question doesn't say to find the standard deviation. Nowhere in the question does it say that, but you can't solve the question I'm about to ask you without finding that standard deviation. So let's read the question first. What is the probability that on a randomly selected day, the water level will be at least 90 feet? So the question wants me to find the probability that the amount of water in the lake is greater than an equal or equal to 90 feet. Okay, I, I can answer that. That's what the normal function does, not the inverse. The normal function will find probabilities above or probabilities below, but the normal function doesn't work in feet. The normal function works in z-scores. So I need to first find the z-score for 90 feet, but the problem is I can't find the z-score for 90 feet because I need to know the standard deviation. To find the z-score for 90 feet, I got to take 90 minus the mean. Okay, well, I do know the mean. That's good. But I need to divide it by the standard deviation. So I first have to find the standard deviation. That's why this is a multi-layered problem. So before I can actually answer the question as, I have to find the standard deviation first. So let's use what was given. I know that 100 is an actual value minus the 85.2 feet as the mean divided by the standard deviation. And because I was given this information right here, that there's either 7.4% above 100 or 92.6 below 100, I could find the z-score for 100. So because I was given that information, I could go ahead and do a second vars here to get my distribution menu, go to an inverse norm, and I'm going to go ahead and put the area of 0.926. I just like leaving it on left. I, I never change it to right. But again, you could. You could change it to right and do the other side, the 0.074. But I feel bad for the kids that don't have this option on their calculator. And I was also raised on a calculator that didn't have that option, so I just always use left. I just have to always make sure you think about that. All right, so I'm going to go down here to PACE, and I'm going to get that Z-score. 1.447 is that Z-score. And this is going to allow me to solve for sigma. Once I know sigma, I could come back over and find the z-score for 90. All right, multiply the sigma over, 1.447 times sigma. That numerator I could do right now, 100 minus 85.2. That's 14.8. And one step left is to divide by the 1.447. And I get my standard deviation, grab a calculator, 14.8, divided by 1.447 is 10.228. I always like three decimals. And that is, of course, feet. So now I could come all the way back here to answer my question. The question is the probability that the amount of water in the lake is 90 feet or more. I need to find the z-score for 90 feet. So the z-score for 90 feet would be 90 minus 85.2. Now I'm going to divide by the freshly found standard deviation. 90 minus 85.2. Hit enter. Get that numerator. Divide by 10.228 and I get a z-score of 0.469, so that's gonna go right here. So asking you to find the probability that the amount of water in the lake is over 90 feet is the same thing as a z-score greater than 0.469. Now, that's going to be a regular normal function, not an inverse, so normal function. So we're looking greater than, so 0.469 is the z-score. We're gonna to go to an upper value of 99. It's essentially going way above, going essentially up to infinity. <coughs> excuse me, 
And then we're going to go ahead and hit paste here. And again, if you're like, what is he doing? Go back and watch my video on the normal function. You'll know exactly what I'm doing. So now I get my probability, my proportion, 0 0.3195, so 0 0.320. That'll actually round to 0 0.320. So there's a 32% probability that the water level will be 90 feet or more. Pretty simple. But again, what a multi-layered problem. This is definitely a great AP stats question because you have to know that you can't find what you're asked until you first find your standard deviation. And then you have to use that standard deviation to find the Z-score for the other number of 90. Then you have to use normal CDF, the normal function, to actually get that probability. So a great question because it involves both the inverse normal function and the regular normal function. Boy, us math teachers, questions like this we just love, so be ready for them. All right, that's it on problems that ask you to find the mean standard deviation. Now stay tuned for another video over an ultimate problem where you don't know the mean and you don't know the standard deviation and you have to solve them. Those are really difficult ones. I'm going to have a separate video just for those. All right, see you later.